Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. Today I have got the Golden Mate 12 volt, 200 amp hour, 2560 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We're going to be doing a charge and a discharge test on this to see how well it performs. So if you're interested in that, continue watching. Let's open up this box and see what all is shipped with this battery. On top, they have a piece of foam to protect the battery in shipping. A couple of small plastic caps to protect those terminals have a user manual here that we'll take a look at. This battery does have handles on it so we can lift this up out of the box. Let's take a quick tour around this battery. Starting on the top up here, it has a red and a black indicator for the positive and negative terminals. You can pop these little plastic caps off here to be able to access those bolts for the terminal and keep that on there for safety. It does have a rope and plastic handle on both sides so that you can easily move this battery around, which weighs right at uh, 25 kilograms. So uh, it's of course not as heavy as your traditional uh, uh, lead acid batteries, but it is still heavy enough. Like I said before, it's the Golden Mate. Uh, this is the model LFP12200. 12.8 nominal voltage, 200 amp hours, 2560 watt hours. And like a lot of these, or all of these lithium iron phosphate batteries, you can charge it from zero, which is freezing, up to uh, 50 degrees Celsius, and discharge at negative 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. Now it says 14.4 uh, is the charging current up to 14.6. I think my charger is gonna do 14.4. All right, so the other sides just have a handle over here. And then over here on this side, there is a QR code. And that's pretty much all we've got here on this battery. Now the little user manual gives just a little bit of information, basically what we read on the front there. And then also it says you can use four in series and four in parallel if you're going to make a much larger uh, battery. So very cool. All right, what I want to do first is connect this up to the charger and get this fully charged before we do a discharge test to see how close we get to that 2,560 watt hour rating on the battery. I don't have my main solar panels hooked up yet in the studio to be charging this. So we're out here in the old studio. So I've got the Golden Mate battery hooked up to this charge controller, which will do lithium iron phosphate at 14.4 volts. I've got 500 watts of solar connected here. So I should just be able to turn this on and we will get the input lights right here. And then we will give this just a moment. It has detected that it is a lithium iron phosphate. We can come up here to the remote and hopefully see some input here in just a bit. Okay, I can confidently say that the battery has reverse polarity protection inside because I was swapping my leads here. So, okay, very good. It is now showing on the battery indicator here as it's supposed to. The battery was shipped at 13.3 volts, which is a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and turn on some solar. Let's see if I can remember which one of these it is. There we go. Solar is now blinking over here. And let's see what we got. 62.6 volts coming in. 1.9 amps, 27 watts. Let me give that a minute here to activate and then we will see this battery charge up to full. I've got passing clouds today, so it may take a little while for the sun to charge this battery up to 100%. Just to show you, I've got over 400 watts coming in now as the clouds just pass over. So that will charge this up decently quick today and we will get on with the discharge test. I just pulled the Golden Mate battery off of the charger. It was charged at full at 14.4 volts. So let's go ahead and do a discharge test to see if this is going to have the 2,560 watt hours that is advertised on the battery. To do that, I have got a 2,000 watt inverter with a heater. I've got a meter here that we can use and also another meter here that will give us some good data on how well this battery is performing. So let's go ahead and set this up real quick and do our discharge test. To get started with this setup, I'm going to remove the plastic caps off of the terminals here. My meter needs to be attached with the orange wire going to the positive. 
the blue wire going to the negative over here. And then also I've got my red and black leads here to connect to the inverter as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the negative first. Just unscrew over here, get my negative lead of my meter here. Now, before I connect the positive of my inverter to the battery, I'm gonna use this 10 watt, 100 ohm resistor. Just going to stick this down here and touch that. And I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds. And this is going to basically charge up the capacitors in my inverter. And that should allow this to not have the big spark or pop that oftentimes happens whenever you connect a inverter like this. So, all right, let's see if that's good enough. It may still have a small spark. Nope, good. Uh, so that is very nice to do if you are uh, not wanting that big pop to happen, which can destroy uh, your equipment. All right, get this attached here. And of course you would uh, be sure to use tools to tighten these in an actual install. All right, the meter is now on here. Shows 14.4 volts. I'm gonna do a reset on both of these and then set my amp hours to be uh, 200 for this battery. I'm also going to use a kilowatt meter and this will allow me to keep track of the time and also the watt hours and amp hours used from my heater over here. So we'll go ahead and turn the inverter on and I will uh, reset the meter over here. I'm gonna use this heater on the high setting which is about 1400 watts and that should allow us to get a reasonable time on this discharge test. So plug that up and I'm going to turn this on and also my stopwatch at the same time and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get this turned on, get my stopwatch going, and we can go over here and look at our meters real quick. I just had to drop my heater setting from the highest to the medium setting because it was pulling too many amps. This battery has a continuous output of 120 amps and that was pulling 137 amps. So on this uh, medium setting, we're doing right at 80 amps and that should be sufficient going 878 watts on the inverter or one kilowatt on the battery. So for our discharge test, I've got the battery connected to the inverter. The inverter says 881 on the watts. If I go down here to the kilowatt, the heater is pulling 819 or so. And then if we look at our display here, we have got 80 amps, one kilowatt draw. We've got 55 watt hours consumed so far. 12.8 volts on the battery, and we've still got 195 amp hours left to uh, discharge this battery. Now that I have the discharge test underway and I have the watt value that this load is pulling, we can calculate how long this battery should last. So you only use the top 80% of these lithium iron phosphate batteries, and the lower 20% is reserved for keeping the battery safe and alive. So, what we're gonna do is say uh, 0.8, which is the amount of the battery we're gonna use, uh, times 2,560 watt hours, which leaves us 2048. So the load we're using from this heater is 880 watts. So I will say 2048 divided by 880, and that is 2.3 hours. So I could say uh, times 60, and that is 140 minutes. So in 140 minutes, this battery should drop down to zero. We can read the kilowatt meter to see the watt hours that have been consumed from the heater. And it won't be 100% accurate because of the, um, the inverter consuming some, but we can also look at this meter right here and it will show us uh, hopefully uh, 2.5 at least to see the um, kilowatt hours consumed. So, all right, that's the plan. I will see you back in a few minutes and we will uh, see how well this battery does. A little update here. We've got an hour and 48 minutes on the timer. And if we look at the display down here, we've got battery is at 12.6. That's under load, of course. 54.8 amp hours left. We've got one kilowatt being consumed still. And it's still at 80 amps. And then we've got 1.8 kilowatt hours. And if I were to go down here and read this, so the heater itself has consumed 1.49 kilowatt hours, whereas this one right here, running the inverter and the heater, 
has got 1.8 kilowatt hours. So this one is going to be more accurate in the end. Our test is almost complete here. The battery has 2.7 amp hours left. It's down to 12.3 volts under load. We've got 2.4 kilowatt hours. And the time has been two hours and 27 minutes. So as soon as this 2.4 hits 2.5, I want to uh, stop the test because there's no way I can see what the uh, remaining 60 watt hours uh, would be here because of the display limitations. But uh, so far this thing has done fantastic. Okay, let's go ahead and call it 2.5 kilowatt hours. We still have 1.7 amp hour left and it's been two hours and 28 minutes. Let's go ahead and turn off our heater here. I have a feeling that that remaining uh, 1.1 amp hours on the battery would have gotten us the last uh, 60 watt hours. So very cool. I like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and unplug everything. Now you'll notice uh, just after the load is removed, we've got 12.8 volts on the battery now. And that indicates that the battery is healthy and is exactly where it should be after the load has been removed. That concludes the discharge test of the Golden Mate 200 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, like I said before, there's some slight variations in the time because of the uh, fluctuating watts being consumed by that heater. Uh, but it is right on spec, so very happy to see that. Now, this battery is sealed, so I'm not going to cut into it to show you the cells. I can just say um, from my initial test here that it charged no problem and had a full discharge no problem. And as soon as I pulled the load off of this, it jumped back up to actually 12.9 volts. So uh, very nice. If you want to check out the Golden Mate battery, I will have a link in the description down below. They have several sizes of batteries and uh, should be able to fit your needs as they arise. So definitely check out those links and I will see you in the next video.